Right, this is uh, BTEC Applied Psychology. This is Unit 3 um, and this is Content Area C2 where we're looking at treatment and management of addiction and stress. Um, and in this video we're looking at psychological treatment for addiction um, and in particular we're going to look at skills training. So what is skills training? Basically, if you've already looked at CBT, then you'll already have a good idea because it's like CBT, but take out anything about cognitive elements. And it's basically the second bit that looks at, at the behavioral, the learning, the life skills bit. So it's basically that section on its own without any cognitive restructuring and so on. So it includes stuff like assertiveness, anger management, social skills training, all the sorts of things that the cognitive behavioral therapist would have in their toolkit uh, to be working on with their client but you just don't focus on cognitive issues at all okay so let's just talk about each one of those three things in turn and just give you a bit more detail um, assertiveness training um, assertiveness is where you're able to um, if you've not come across this uh, term before it basically means you can stick to your guns but kind of calmly um, and uh, without shouting, you can stick to your point of view and put it across. So the idea is that um, this has been picked up as something that's helpful to avoid relapse because often people who... Um, uh, who people who are addicted to something often relapse after an argument because of the stress and negative feelings that it triggers then they go off to gamble or drink or or whatever as like to to let out all those negative feelings as like a release for it so um the idea is if you can teach people to be more um, effective in the way that they argue, or not argue, but uh, when there's a conflict, it means they can resolve it better rather than resorting to sort of shouting at each other. Um, if you can remain calm during a conflict um, and put your point of view across, then hopefully you avoid that kind of situation where a relapse is triggered, where someone's like, oh, I just have to go out for a smoke. You know, I've, I've got to do it. I'm, I'm too upset. So it's, it's about avoiding those sorts of situations, assertiveness training. Right, anger management, kind of similar, but... Um, focused a little bit more on expressing anger more constructively um, rather than simply about the way that you talk and remain calm in an argument specifically. So sometimes if, if somebody is anxious or scared about something they may express it as anger. It can often be something that's linked to the addiction so for example someone who's had been abused as a child may be carrying a lot of anger and that abuse experience may also have led them to develop an addiction so it's all linked together with the addiction and if you can teach someone to manage their anger in a more constructive way give them more of an outlet again they're less likely to end up in situations where they've lost control and they've um resorted to their addictive behavior again social skills training this is the third element or another one of the elements anyway um and this is an interesting one because you'll see griffiths who's the same guy that did the uh, fruit machine study that we looked at if you remember um he looked at people who were addicted to computer games um and this was university students and found that actually they often had really poor social skills. What he couldn't tell, though, was whether the social skills had come as a result of them spending all their time on computer games. They're not been developing social skills through their late teenage years or whether they resorted to computer games as a result of feeling really anxious in social situations. And it may well be that there's an element of both. If you think about it, both things probably feed into it. But, um, you know, equally, people who are um, alcoholic um, and gamblers, those 
uh, social situations can often like be associated with triggers for those kinds of addictions as well. So social skills training can be really helpful for a wide range of different things that someone with an addiction may encounter. So it can be useful for someone who's addicted to computer gaming because they may feel anxious about social situations and therefore avoid them and therefore take refuge in their their um addiction so it's about trying to reduce the anxiety for them around social situations so that they're not using the other thing the, the gaming as a crutch um, for alcoholics and gamblers it may be more specific things like particular social situations in which they're likely to relax relapse uh, into their addictive behavior so working on those social skills can be really helpful in loads of different uh, areas Right. How does it work then practically? So normally skills training is carried out in a group um, and it, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, what you would think of as a lesson, really, where you're working in a small group. You may be doing various things around role playing, discussions about different things, sharing ideas or uh, experiences around some of the things that you're working on. Um, it can involve uh, yeah, modelling and role playing. So the, the person who's running the session might model a particular social skill with someone or use uh, someone that's mastered a social skill to demonstrate it and then you might be role playing it uh, homework again trying out various tasks in different social situations um, and finally visualization um, imagining situations for example in which they have to be assertive um, and trying to think what sorts of things they would say within those situations so that's how skills training works. Right, strengths of skills training. You'll be really surprised at this, but there's evidence to show it's effective. So first of all, you've got this study by Toniato, um, who they were looking, comparing CBT and skills training and found that they were equally effective. So that says, actually, that's a strength for skills training because it's saying that skills training is just as effective as C CBT. What? Why do we need the cognitive bit if skills training is just as good? So that's a big plus for skills training. The second point is that actually it's it's long term, it's effective in the long term. Because it's looking at those sorts of situations where relapse may occur, that means that it's um, been really good at stopping people from relapse. Um, and there's evidence again for that. The same study looked at a people again after a year and found that it, they were still getting benefit from it so that's good lots of evidence to show its strengths if we look at the weaknesses the big problem is that it's really demanding if you think about going along to those sort of sorts of sessions um where you're working on skills training yet you need to be engaged in it to get the benefit from it you need to be willing to try and do role play which not everyone is always really keen on uh, so people always drop out um, some people will kind of go along when there's a crisis in their life and then be like oh I, I'm fine once the crisis is resolved and stop going or like go along and don't bother with the homework or kind of go along and let it wash over them so it's really um, that kind of reduces its effectiveness because um, often when they measure how effective it's been they would do that with people who have completed the course um, the second issue is that although Although the Toniato study said CBT and skills training are equally effective, there are other studies that say CBT is more effective. So this is kind of like contradictory evidence, I guess, um, saying that we should be looking at cognitive factors, that they're important. So uh, this particular study by Heather found that social skills training yes did help some people but cbt benefited everyone right up to the most severe cases so that's uh, suggesting that actually the cognitive element of it is helping uh, or is adding something if we go for for cognitive behavioral therapy instead so if we go for social skills training are we giving an incomplete uh, not as effective treatment that's the question Okay, so that's actually the end of content area C2. So well done if you've got this far.